All right, BC Unit One Day Five Notes Graphing Calculator Day. You need to have a graphing calculator that you're going to get to know how to use. I'm going to be using a um, TI eighty three plus, which is probably going to be similar to TI eighty fours and probably other TIs might be similar. Could be some differences. Uh, it doesn't matter what brand you use; it's fine. Uh, but if it's something other than mine, you, you have to do a little more research. But there's not that many different things that we do on these graphic characters anyway. So you should be able to find the main things that we do, derivatives and integrals and graphs and stuff like that. So um, first thing, can you at least just do basic math, uh, some you know evaluating expressions? So go ahead and try these two. And uh, there's some little notes on the sides. You can add more notes to your, yourself about where to find things. This is from my calculator. It needs to have the answers need to be three decimal accurate, truncated, or rounding. So, for instance, if your calculator gives you 2.5647, then truncating is just 2.564, which I like. Hard to mess up truncating, you just cut it off. If you're to round this, then you have to decide to round up or down. You can make the wrong choice. This one you're supposed to round up, and it gives you a different answer. I'll probably give two answers uh, anytime. There are two different answers for round truncated in my solutions. I don't need both. I need you just give me one, but I'll give you guys both. So whichever way you did it, hopefully you can check it. <clears throat> okay. Um, just watch out for order of operations. You might have to add extra parentheses to ensure that your calculator does things in the correct order. Um, some things it does, it does have some order of operations sort of built in, but it's more like if you need to do this chunk of stuff before this chunk of stuff or whatever. So, um, this first one, we could do 20 over 25, and that's fine. Don't need parentheses around that, but we do need parentheses around. Now, this will treat it like this isn't in the denominator because there's not parentheses around at all. It'll do this first, and then it should do this. Now, you do need parentheses around that, and you do need parentheses around the denominator. Otherwise, it will just divide by five and then subtract three root two from it afterwards. So we definitely need at least that. And that's the right answer. So 12.313 round of truncated comes out the same this time. Um, so anyways, be careful that you actually close the, the parentheses on square roots and other functions that introduce open parentheses. It just does it automatically for a lot of functions. Uh, next one. Uh, uh, so next one, we definitely need parentheses. So we didn't really need the parentheses around the whole fraction that we needed around the top and bottom. And we definitely need them around the top and bottom here. Uh, so that's going to be parentheses sign 47.6. Close parentheses on the sign plus e squared. Close parentheses on the exponent on the squared. Um, there's different ways to do e. You do second division e and then do the caret symbol and then do the two or then you, or you can do this one which opens it up. So then you do that. It's up to you. Um, bye bye. Open new parentheses, 10 raised to the negative 0.2. Now, when you raise something to an exponent, um, a lot of times you need parentheses around it if it's more than just a number. If it involves multiple numbers or variables and stuff like that. If it's just one number. I think this should be okay because that's a negative sign. It's not going to accidentally think it's raised into just a negative sign. So I think it'll get by this time. Plus, square root of pi is on the carrot symbol, plus one, close, close. Now, this is the answer I get, which uh, truncated would be 2.599 and rounded would be 2.600. By the way, I'd write the extra zeros to communicate your intent of three decimal accuracy. Otherwise, if you just write that, which is technically the same thing, I might think you're rounding the nearest tenth. 
and I want to know that your rounds in your three decimals. Now this answer is wrong. And the reason is if you get a mode, I'm in radian mode, which we are going to be in most of the time in this class, but we are doing some degrees in this chapter, but after this chapter, I don't think we'll do degrees again the rest of the year. So you could either one, change it to that, and you can copy and paste the previous command line, second enter, which is really helpful to not have to type stuff, and hit enter again. And the answer is 3.048 uh, truncated or 3.049 rounded. So that's the right answer. The other way to get around it is you could be in radian mode and still get this one right. But you can you put the degree symbol in here. Now, if you want to insert something new, do second delete. Otherwise, if you start typing stuff, it just overrides what's already there. So usually when you're like typing something in a text or a document, it automatically uses insert by default, but your calculators don't, at least this one doesn't. So you have to hit second delete where you want to insert something new. Now under the angle menu, which is second apps, there's a degree symbol. So you can put the degree symbol in and even though it's in radian mode, this will override it and you get the right answer. Okay, so some different ways. Uh, to deal with it. Um, so you could just put in degree mode and then it'll read as degrees or you could be in radio mode or degree mode and put the degree symbol. Um, so there's some notes about where to do those different things. You can add more notes too if you want. Okay. Um, now using tables is really handy because it's a way to calculate a bunch of values. And so we're going to go and put this into our Y menu. So we're going to go to Y equals. Now I'm, you might have something there from before. So if you just hit clear, it gets rid of it all. And we type it in. Now we definitely need parentheses on the top. Let's see X squared plus sign X close the parentheses on the sign. Let's print these on top. Now we don't need print these around the bottom because it's all inside of a square root, which has its own print these. We do need print these there, x minus 2. Close that, close the square root. Now I'm not going to graph this, My that's not the point here. Um, I want to calculate a bunch of values real quick, which you could do on the graph, but not that quick. Go to the table, which is on second graph. Now there might be some stuff here. Now it's giving me errors. I don't know why. It might be because it's measuring, but these are some previous values. So you could hit just delete, delete one at a time. Or you could go up to the top. Nope. Sorry. So delete them all. And you can type these in. 4, 3.7, 4.8. Now, I want three decimal accuracy, and you might be like, yeah, that's three decimals, and this is only one, and that's two. And by the way, this third decimal um, is a truncated, is rounding. You, if you need these values for some other calculation, you need more than three decimals. So the way to see more ac accuracy, see this one's interesting. It looks like it's only two, is rounding the third decimal, which is okay. That's an option. But uh, so this would be... Um, now, I feel like there's something wrong. These values don't look right. So let's go back to Y real quick. Oh, because we're in radian mode, which I think we should be. In general, we should be in radian mode, uh, unless they tell you to work with degrees. So we're in radian mode. Um, the Y equals. Looks good. Good. Oh, I forgot the division symbol. Second, insert, divide. Okay, now I'm gonna, nope, don't wanna do that. Okay, second table. So those are the values I want. Um, so, just draw a little diagram of what we're looking at. Now, if there's something in Y2, it'll graph it, or you could turn it off. You shut off other functions so they're not showing up on your graph or in your table. 
And the way you shut a function on or off is you go to y equals and you see how the, the equal sign is dark. It'll automatically turn on when you type it in, but if you hit enter on top of it, it turns it off. So you can turn it off or on. Um, so four, 3 3 3.7, 12.8, 3.4085, 3.1918, 15.788. So a lot of times we're going to use these values for something else and three decimals is not enough. So if you highlight one of these, uh, it will show you more accuracy at the bottom. So you can, you know, do things correctly. So this would be 3.408 rounded or truncated. And the next one would be, now you gotta be careful because you might think, oh, well I could round it to 0.9 because it's five. Well, actually it's four. So that's why, that's the other reason you wanna look at this because that could lead you to the wrong answer. Next one is 3.191 truncated or 3.192 rounded. Next one is 15.787 truncated, 15.788 rounded. So they round what they display in the table right there. They rounded that. Um, anyways, so um, that's helpful. Now you gotta make sure if, you're, if your calculator is just filled with a bunch of numbers and you can't change any of them, it's probably because your table set up on a window is on auto. And then what that does is it starts a table at whatever table start is, and then it increments it up by two. So this would be negative one, one, three, five, seven. Watch. Oh, well, just kidding. Um, I don't know why it's gonna work. Now it doesn't let me type anything or delete anything. <laughs> uh, anyways, usually that would like fill the table up, but I don't know. I don't think we ever use that. So you want this one on ask. So you, the independent variables, the X variable, the X. Okay. So the table start and the increment, this is just if you use this auto auto. But we want it to ask us for the x, and then we want it to calculate the y for us, right? So that's usually the way we want to set up for our class. Be careful. Um, this negative symbol down here, this is the negative symbol, is different than the minus symbol. They're not interchangeable. It will mess things up. You can always add a negative instead of subtracting, but you can't just put the negative symbol instead of the subtraction or subtraction instead of the negative symbol. It'll give you an error. Anyways, it won't. Um, of course, we want to graph things in our graphing category. So let's see if we can graph this. I'm going to put a new one in to uh, x. I don't need to put parentheses around that because it will do the multiplication before the division after this square root of x squared plus x plus one. Now, anytime before you hit graph, you always want to go to the window. And either there's something about the problem that tells you what the window should be, or you kind of know enough about the problem, the function to make an appropriate window, or they just straight out tell you. So we're going to do negative five to five for the x's and negative three to three for the y's because that's what that's what they're showing us. But you don't want to hit graph right away. Unless you have no idea, then you probably want to do like zoom standard, negative 10, 10, negative 10, 10, which is noted down here. Um, if you have no idea. And then the thing is, is you got to be totally willing to retype in the window after you graph it to get a closer view of what's important, zoom out so you catch things that you know you're missing or whatever. So graph. So here it is. So it kind of looks like it's going down a little bit. And then it looks like it goes through zero, zero, but don't count on that. So there you go. Um, so you go to y equals and y1, you type this in.
Um, so you do the window, you need the graph button. Now, um, you could calculate F2 from the table. We could go to the table and put two in, and there's the answer, 1.511 or 1.512, round or truncated. Uh, or from the graph, if it's only a single value, from the graph you go to second trace calculate, which is a ton, we're gonna use all this stuff. The number one's value. Hit enter and you type in the X value that you want to and you hit enter and it, and it shows it to you on the graph and it gives you the value down here. So that's another way. If you're already on the graph, no, you just gotta do one value. That might be good. Well, the table still works. Uh, the minimal value, that's the minimum. That means the absolute minimum, if they don't say relative. And it looks like it's like somewhere around here. I think that this is the absolute min. Um, but your calculator will find it for you. So we could do second trace calculate minimum. And you got to tell it where to look for it. Um, you got to give a left bound, right bound, and a guess. So I'm looking, I'm like, well, that looks like it's around like, I don't know, negative two or something. I could say negative three to zero, guess negative 1.5. And it is, it looks like it's really close to negative two. Now I would, you know, maybe, I don't know. So um, the coordinates here are negative 2.0000001 comma negative 2.309401. So a lot of times I'm gonna write stuff on my graph as I'm finding it. And I might need this for some future calculation. So I wanna keep extra decimal so I don't have to redo it if I do. And it only takes me a couple seconds to just write down the extra decimals, even if I end up not using them. Now, the way I want you to write the answer to these, this is the absolute value is the y value only. Okay, if you give me the coordinates, if you give me negative 2.000, comma, negative 2.309, you're not getting credit. Okay, it's just this. But, I, but the location, the x value, is important, and often you're asked to give that instead, or you're just asked to give both. So I'm going to say, this is the way I want you to write the answers, and this is what we talked about last year. The minimal or minimum value of the function is negative 2.309. At x equals negative 2.000. I'm going to write the zeros because I want people to know I'm doing three decimal accuracy. So, this is a good thorough answer because it gives the minimum value, it gives the location. Sometimes I ask for this, sometimes for this, sometimes both. I guess you remember that from last year. So, this is a safe way to answer it, and this is the way I want you to answer it because I don't like people losing points unnecessarily just because they gave the wrong thing, even though they had the right answer. Now, um, when you do second calculate minimum, you could also use the cursor to get to the left and the cursor to get to the right and the cursor to guess, but it takes a lot longer. I think I like typing them. So now that looks like it's going through zero, zero. That'd be interesting to see if it really is. Now, uh, one way to, to, find out is to do second calculate zero, that's the x intercept. You say, well, between negative one and one, I'm gonna guess at zero. And it is zero. Okay, well, that's nice. Sometimes if they're really close to zero, and it's really hard to tell unless you zoom in. But let your calculator do it for you. Um, so, you know, we use that calculate, that second trace calculate menu a ton. When we're doing stuff from the graph. There's ways to do that, do most of that stuff from the home screen too. Um, most of it. Never use trace. I mean, I don't think we're ever gonna use trace itself, which allows you to just kind of go along the curve. I don't really know the point of that. It's not good for finding mins and maxes. Be like, oh, I'm gonna trace and be like, okay, I think, I think, that was the min right there. Now I 
actually, so no, we're good. <laughs> that's not the way to do it. Okay. Um, okay, finding intersections of graphs. Uh, so we could graph the graph these two graphs. Now, by the way, you should have an idea of what the graphs are going to look like. This is a parabola opening up. That's a line. So when you go to graph these, you should get those things. Um, and window, it says negative 10, 10, negative 10, 10. So you could do zoom, uh, zoom six is Z standard, which is negative 10, 10, negative 10, 10. So we do that, or you just type it in. So there's your parabola. There's your line. Parabola opens up. It goes to zero, six, by the way. Four, five, six. Kind of looks like that. And then there's a line that goes through two and has a slope of one. So it kind of looks like that. So I mean, makes sense. Um, now, this is an intersection, and this is an intersection. So we have two of them. And the way we do it is we go second calculate, number five, intersect. Now, by the way, if you just hit the number, that's a shortcut for selecting yeah, anything on any list. And then there are certain things we use a lot, and you start to remember the number, and it saves you a couple seconds. Now, it says first curve, first curve, second curve, second curve. Reason is asking for curves and second curve is that you could have three curves on the graph and you can't find the intersection of three curves all at once. You can only do cur two curves at a time. So it's always going to ask you if there is only two curves, then just hit enter, enter. Now you got to give it a guess. Now it, it looks really close, so you could just hit enter. It needs to be close. The closer it is, the quicker it finds it. Um, so we get negative uh, 0 0.2749172 comma 1.7250828. So I like to write these all the way out just in case. Second calculate, number five intersect, first curve, second curve. Now this one looks like it's around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So just typing the number in is a lot quicker than doing the trace thing back and forth. 7.2749172 comma 9.2749172. Okay. Our answers should just be three decimal accurate though. So we're going to write, uh, these are ordered pairs, negative 0 0.274 comma 1.725 is truncated. Now you could have rounded it and be negative 0 0.275. Five. Um, and the other one is 7.274 comma 9.274. That's the truncated answer. Now, if you round it to be 7.275, 9.275, that's okay also. Okay. Um, Next, we're going to solve this. Now, this happens to be the same two equations we just graphed. So one way to interpret this is to say, where is the parabola below the line? And you can see this is where the parabola is below the line. So this is a polynomial inequality. So we expect to get intervals for the answers. Now, it would be solid dots, right? So you can see the answer, and we just did all that work. So we could just say it's the bracket negative 0 0.274 comma 7.274 bracket. That's it, interval notation. Now, if you round it, it'd be negative 0 0.275 and comma 7.275. Now, the way I'll probably recommend you do this, though, in the future is to actually go ahead and move everything to one side, like we do when we're solving it. So, because this is potentially a lot simpler. This one wasn't that bad, but this one, all I'm doing is graphing one graph, so you deal with one graph at a time. Now, this one was super convenient because I already graphed them, but if I hadn't, this would probably be better. 
one graph and you're just looking for where it's below the x-axis, which is a lot more predictable because you're going to get some crazy graphs. And graph two crazy graphs, I forgot one's below or above the other, gets crazy. So that would be the better way to do it. Now, by the way, um, yeah, so x squared minus 7x minus 2. Now, um, window, see window, I would just say negative 10 to 10, and then I would say negative 1 to 1 in the y direction, because I don't even care if I see that whole graph. I just want to see where its x-intercepts are and see where it's below the graph. Well, eh, let's see if this does the job. Eh, it's kind of hard to tell. Maybe it would be good to have a little better view of this. So it should be a parabola, right? There it is. So, so if you do it like this and you just got one parabola, it looks like it's going through zero, zero, but we can do second calculate zero. And you say, well, it looks like it's between, you know, negative one and positive one, and my guess zero. And so we're looking for this. So it's not zero. Should get the same answer as we got the other way, right? So this is negative zero point two seven two seven four nine one seven two comma zero. Second calculate zero. It's hard for me to tell what the values are here. I don't see that usually you can see the increments here. So I'm gonna guess here. Now the only reason I was doing the Tracing is I couldn't figure out what the values are. 7.274917 comma zero, and then we would get the same answer. So this is the way I'm usually going to do it. <clears throat> so the next problem is a great opportunity to see why it's going to start to get crazy if you keep saying where is this above this graph. Um, so let's let's try that that out. Let's say okay, x divided by parentheses and e parentheses x plus three. And then the other one is 2 divided by parentheses x plus 2. And the window, I don't really know. I'm going to go zoom 6. <clears throat> now, the first graph, that's the first graph. has vertical. And that's the second graph. Now, you're trying to figure out where that first graph is above the second graph. And it's messy. I don't even want to try. I mean, maybe I could pull it off. I don't even know. <clears throat> this is not a good idea. So what would be better is to do like we do uh, in general. Um, it's to move everything to one side. Now, we don't need to combine them into a single fraction and do all at least common denominator stuff because that's stuff we have to do to fit, finish it by hand. But instead, we're just going to graph one graph and figure out where it's above the x-axis. This is the way to go here. Okay. Now, I would usually just type it in like that. Let me show you another trick, though. We could do... Uh, a lot of times, something that's already typed in, we in a wide menu, we want to access it and use it for something else on the home screen or whatever. So you go vars, y bars, function, y1, minus vars, y bars, function, y2. And that will reference what's there. And then we could turn these off, first two off. Even It'll still work, but it won't graph them, which is good. Now, before we ever graph anything, um, we really want to have a rough idea of what's going to happen on the graph. That's going to help you figure out your window and just make sure you're doing things right. This is going to have two vertical asymptotes, a negative 3 and negative 2. Like, you should expect that. So uh, I'm going to start sketching my graph. And by the way, I do want sketches of all these graphs on any of these problems where you're graphing for anything. I want a sketch of the graph to give you credit. So that's negative 2, and then there's another one at negative 3. Um, and as x goes to infinity, that goes to 1, that goes to 0, it goes to y equals 1. So that's, this, that's the horizontal asymptote. So this is all good stuff to know. So now when you go to graph it, by the way, my calculator connects, a lot of times connects the 
the two sides of vertical asymptotes with a straight line. And so that's another good reason to know it's coming because otherwise you might think it's part of the graph. So if I hit graph, there's a first vertical asymptote, there's a second one. So these lines aren't actually part of the graph. But so if you look at this, this is where the first part is. And then the second part goes something like this. And then the next part goes something like that. And we're trying to figure out where this graph is above or equal to the x uh, to x equals zero, which well, it's going to be all of this, right? And then it's going to be this all dot going up, and that's going to be this all dot going to the right, right? So I think that that's a picture. Now I can almost write your answer right now. The answer is going to be. Uh, negative infinity to uh, negative three parentheses, right? So union bracket where that x intercept is, comma negative two because the vertical asymptote. Union bracket where this x intercept is, comma positive infinity. So I almost have the whole answer. I just got to find those two x intercepts. And that's way easier than the first thing I did where I was graphing two graphs together. That was crazy. So you can calculate zero. So there's one between negative two and negative three. So I'm gonna say guess negative three, negative two, guess negative 2.5. And that is negative 2.4949. So negative 2.449. Truncated rounds the same. You gotta find this one. Second, calculate zero. Now this one's, I don't know, it's like, that's zero to 10. It looks like it's around five. So I might guess like two to eight, guess five. And it is actually 2.4494897. So that's gonna be 2.449 round truncates the same. So that's your answer. Now the next one, we could do two graphs, or we could just do one. I'm usually going to just go with one. I'm going to say, you know what? Move everything on one side compared to zero. Graph that. Figure out what's below the x-axis. So we're going to go to y equals. I'm going to get rid of all these. I'm going to do it now. Absolute values under the math button for me. Num abs x to the third plus 2x. Minus three, close parentheses and absolute value, minus five. Window, uh, I don't know, negative 10, 10, negative 10, 10. We'll just try it. Okay, there's a graph. Now, I probably only need like negative five to five. Uh, negative six. You know, this gives me a little better view of what's going on. Now, these absolute value graphs usually have these sharp corners because it folded one half up. That's what happens. So we're going to draw a sketch of this. So any, I need sketches on the homework and your tests. Give me a sketch. There's really no work to show. You don't. I don't need you to write down all the buttons. You're only writing that down for your own reference if you feel like it might be helpful for the future. And we want to know where is this below but not equal to. So you got to put open dots. I like to darken it, kind of like when I do my line checks. There's the answer. So I just got to find these two x-intercepts. Second calc, zero. Looks like one's at negative one, so I'm going to say negative two to zero, guess negative one. And it is negative 0 0.770917. And the other one, so I can calculate zero is around 1.7 maybe. So maybe guess one to two, guess 1.7. It is 1.6702447. So write the stuff on your picture and then write your answer. That's it. It's not that much to show. So the answer is parentheses negative 0 0.770 comma 1.670 parentheses. Now if you round it, it'd be negative 0 0.771. That'd be the only difference. So that's the way I would do it. So absolute value on mine is under math, num, 
and then number one ABS. I don't know how it is on your guys. Now we can throw a little calculus in, find the slope of this curve at x equals two and x equals five. Now we you know we could do the derivative by hand, y prime equals three e to the x, y prime at two equals three e squared, and then get a decimal. We do y prime at five equals three e to the fifth. So I mean we could do that. <laughs> Three e squared twenty two point one six seven okay. round or truncated three e to the fifth four forty five point two three nine round or truncated okay um, or you could let your calculator do it so we could do if we do multiple calculations, you can go to the Y menu and say 3e e to the X, and then I'm not going to graph it. I'm just putting it there so I can access it from the home screen. So I'm going to do math, under the math menu, near the bottom is option number eight, in derive. And then you can do vars, Y vars function, and Y1, comma X, comma 2. Same answer. So that's another way to do it. Um, math eight in derive. Then I did vars y vars y one, and that put y one right there, comma. X, we always put X, that's what you're taking derivative with respect to, and then the value too. So, although some of you guys, this I think probably shows something more like this D, DX, y, Y1, or something like that, and then X equals 2, or something like that. Maybe it shows something a little more like the way we write it by hand. And then if I want to do almost the same thing, you do second calculate and then just change it to a two to a five and you get the same answer. Um, the other way to do it is you could create the, the tangent line and you could do the derivative on the home screen. You could graph it. So window, I don't know, zoom six, there's a graph. So you could do it here. You do second calculate number six dy dx, put x equals two, and then it tells you the answer 22.167172. Same answer I got before. So you could do it like that. So you can calculate six dy dx at five. Same answer. The other way is from the graph screen, you can go to the draw menu, second program draw. And this is kind of a cool little trick. Number five is tangent. And it says, okay, we're going to draw a tangent line to your graph. Tell us where. Well, I want x equals two. So then it draws it and it gives the equation of the tangent line at the bottom. So that's kind of cool. Second program brings you to the draw menu. Option number five, tangent. Then you hit enter, or you hit number five, which is the same as select and hit enter. You tell it where to do it. X equals two, hit enter. And then it gives you the equation at the bottom. Y equals 22.167171970. Plus negative twenty two point one six. Now the only drawback to this is it only displays so much information, and it usually displays a ton of decimals, and so this this gets kind of jipped, and you might lose your three decimal accuracy. But the slope of a tangent line is the derivative is is the slope of the function. So there is that same answer that we got other ways. So that's kind of cool. Um, anyways, there's different ways to do that. 
Now I do want to show you guys a couple more things on the homework assignment. So we're going to add just a few more notes on the homework assignment. Um, on the back, so you need, well, first of all, on the front, you need drawings. You know, I'll, I'll show you real quick what mine looks like. Lots of drawings. Okay, so I need drawings. Um, on the back, I wanted to add a couple things to help you with these problems. So there's a little chunk of space right here to add some notes. Um, so one is for polar coordinates, which is, that would help you on this one, polar. So this is a sneak peek of some new stuff we are going to learn later in the unit. So polar coordinates or later this year. Might be nice to see this. So this polar coordinates are just a different way of locating the same thing that we, we locate with uh, rectangular coordinates. Um, now we're still going to graph these on x, y graph. So there's some little notes right here. So let's say you have a point and the coordinates of it are 2, 2. Right? That's called rectangular coordinates. And that's what you've probably always used, rectangular coordinates. But instead, we could describe the location by saying, well, how far is it from the origin and what is the angle to that place starting at the positive x-axis, which is where we're used to finding angles. So that's rectangular. Polar says, I want the radius and the angle, radius first, angle second. So now we could do a little work here. Say, oh, okay, well, this is a uh, isosceles right triangle. It's got to be 45, 45. So this is, uh, this is two, this is two, this is two root two. So the radius is two root two, right? And the angle is uh, 45 degrees, but we're always going to do radians of pi over four. So this would be polar for the same location. So in general, um, to kind of write this a little more generically, this is a good preview. You have a coordinate x, y, and you have a radius, right? And this is x, this is equal to y, and you have an angle theta. Right? So how do you find, if you have R and theta, how do you find X and Y from that? So you can, you can, you can convert from one type of coordinate to the other, which we'll, we'll do again. But um, if you have R and theta to get X, you'd say, well, let's use, that's a just basic right triangle. Let's use some basic trig uh, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And then you could say x equals r cosine theta. So we use this a ton, okay? And then if you want to find y, you'd say, well, that's opposite. So let's use sine equals the opposite y over hypotenuse, which is r. So y equals r sine theta. Um, and another relationship is that x squared plus y squared uh, equals r squared. And another relationship is tangent of theta equals opposite over x so that means that theta equals inverse tangent of y over x so if you know x and y you can find theta and r if you know r and theta you can find x and y so you can go back and forth um anyways it's just a little sneak peek and so we're going to use that on problem 10 i'll help you guys out right now so um i'm going to get rid of that Get rid of that stuff. Now I'm going to go to mode, and you want to go to function mode is where we're usually at, right? PAR is for parametrics, which we're going to talk about. POL is for polar. So put in polar mode, and then go to the Y equals menu, and you'll see like R's instead of Y's now, and thetas, because usually in polar coordinates, we get a function 
for r that's in terms of theta instead of y equals a function in terms of x we do radius in terms of theta so um, I'll just kind of give you an idea of how to do this so uh, if we if we did if just type this in at 1 minus sine and instead of x we want thetas which you'll notice is on this button you know how do I get it I'll just hit that button like you would for x oh it's a theta like if you're in polar mode it's put thetas instead of x's um, so if, if you put that function there r equals 1 minus sine theta and then you want to go to window like always now usually these a lot of these graphs are 0 to 2 pi, so you notice lots of extra things in the window. There's, there's, a, there's a, a range of thetas and x's and y's. So the x and y's are the same as they've always been. Theta, though, will restrict how much of that polar curve you get. 0 to 2 pi is good. Um, we could just graph it right now and try it. It's negative 10, 10, negative 10, 10. And it's pretty small, so we could do zoom box. And I don't know if you guys have ever done this. Create a box around what you want to zoom in on. And hey, it's something kind of like a heart. In fact, we call this a call this a cardioid. That's the name of that shape. Cardioid, cardi for heart. So, um, anyways, so function parametrics polar is what you want to put your calculator in if you want to do that. So that's just for that. Now parametrics, which you're seeing on here, parametrics. R is a two-dimensional motion. Um, so two, 2D motion. We did 1D motion last year, which is called rectilinear motion. So parametrics is two-dimensional motion. And the there's there's an equation for X, which is the motion in the X direction, and there's an equation for Y, which is the motion in the Y direction. And so you can put your calculator into parametric mode. And now if you go to the y equals, you see this x, t, y, t. I don't know why I put the r there. And, and then everything's in terms of t. Right? They got capital T's where you usually put x's from that button. And so you have two different components. It's kind of like vector. You have something moving in 2D and you break it down into the X and you break it down into Y. So the coordinate here, the location is X, Y. The, the velocity is in the X direction, VX, and the Y direction. This is the overall velocity. So um, DY, DX is still the slope of the curve because we're going to graph these on xy curves. But then dy dt and dx dt are the velocities in each direction that I was talking about right here. And then, um, and then if you want to find dy dx, here's the cool thing. Um, you take dy dt over dx dt, and, and kind of algebraically, it, it feels like it makes sense, like the dt's cancel out, and you get dy over dx, and that kind of makes sense. Um, so some good, like, physics stuff here. But for these problems, 11, uh, part a and b, 12, part a and b, um, your, your graph 12 and 13 you're just or 12 you're just graphing okay um anyways i'll let you guys try the other problems but uh you need this specifically for number 12. okay number 11 i would just 
I would just do try and do normal calculus from last year. This was for number eleven. I feel like, or for number ten, for number number eleven, I would just I would just try and do it. Um, it's it is parametrics, but you could ignore that and get the right answers. Um, I challenge you to just try that first. So try all these problems in homework. It's kind of a long lesson day. We covered a lot, so.